Today, I am delighted to be joined by Alex Kendall, who is the founder and CEO of Wave, which is an autonomous car company that's doing things completely differently. Uh, they started only four years ago, and now they've got a fleet of electric vehicles which are driving around London autonomously, which is just incredible. And these cars can scale and adapt to any driving condition all over the world. And I'm going to learn so much more today from Alex, which is absolutely brilliant. What I love about it is these cars are going to be changing the way we move. They're going to be more sustainable. They're going to be more reliable. Uh, and really importantly, they're going to be more accessible to lots more people. Alex, let's start at the beginning. What made you come up with the idea for Wave? And why is it different from the sort of self-driving cars that already exist? So what we've gone and built is a next generation approach, one that has the onboard embodied intelligence to actually drive itself, making its own decisions and driving based on what it sees. It doesn't follow set rules or a set map. It can see the world like you and I can, driving with its own vision, making its own decisions. What this means is that it has the ability to really drive anywhere. So we're truly excited to usher in this, this new wave of autonomy um, and, to, and to drive us forward with artificial intelligence. Have I got this right? You're saying it's not about humans learning something and then programming the computer, but the computer actually learns itself. We teach our car to drive much like how, how you would. When did you learn to drive? I was 17. So, uh, so quite a long time ago now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the fascinating thing about humans learning to drive is, is you might only have 20 or 30 hours of driving lessons, um, but you can learn to do the most complex of behaviours and, and drive in a, a really safety critical manner uh, to, to, well, to, to drive around the world. But you've actually had, in your case, 17 years of experience of watching how the world works, learning how physics works, how things interact with each other, and, it's been, and, and you've, you've done that through unsupervised learning by just observing the world. So we do something similar where we show our car hours and hours of video of driving experience and it learns how the world behaves, how things interact and ultimately learns to, um, learns to safely drive itself from that experience. So it's really uh, similar to how a human learns, teaching through experience, through data and machine learning. Amazing. Well, it really is the future now, isn't it? It's, uh, it's so exciting to see. Should we go and get in the car? Let's do it. I'm now a tipper who is a safety operator for WAVE. Safety operator tipper, what does that mean? Um, I'm just making sure that um, everything goes uh, well behind the wheels. What was your job before to get this role? I was a driving instructor. Oh, so you used to drive, instruct people and now you're instructing computers. Exactly, yes. <laughs> the first time you got behind the car, a, a driverless car, how did it feel? I was just speechless. Because, yeah, I've never experienced something like this. And you literally were sitting there with your hands off the wheel and it was taking you on a journey. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How long have you been working at Wave for? Uh, just a year. And over that time, have you noticed a difference in the experience sitting behind the wheel? Is the computer getting better and better? Yeah, absolutely. Every day I see the difference. Yeah, and it's just like a student. The more it learns, the more um, experience it gets. Oh, absolutely amazing. It's so cool. Here we go. It's okay. driving itself. Wow. How good is this? So this is all autonomous. The car's driving itself based on what it sees. I don't think we've ever been, ever been on these roads before, but it's able to drive on them through computer vision and artificial intelligence. And does it have a speed limit that you're allowed to drive an autonomous car or is it just the same as the road? Same as the roads and it'll see the speed limit here and, and make its own decisions and make sure it's following and, and, and moving safely. but. Look at that, makes a right Gosh, turn. Yeah. And I can attest that there is absolutely no hands on this wheel. Is there no pedal? You're not using the pedal either. No, amazing. Um, so it's, it's learning all the time from all of this experience, it's gathering. Um, but you can see it's quite tight spaces, right? This is a yeah. really complex environment and it's driving through here uh, just, just with cameras. Um, so the vehicle itself is a, is a sort of a standard modern electric vehicle. Um, that we've fitted out with uh, with the cameras and and computers to make this possible. So there's six cameras around the vehicle that lets us see in all directions at once. We have a computer in the back that's able to run the uh, AI system to actually let the vehicle drive, um, and that's it. It's amazing. And so, what's different from this to other autonomous vehicles? The cool thing about this vehicle is it's driving based on what it sees. So it's not following a pre-programmed route or um, you know, rules that are hand-coded by engineers, but it's 
it's able to drive in complex environments like we have here in central London, making decisions in real time based on what it sees. What do you think, Holly? I think it's, I think it's amazing. It's, uh, it's just so weird to think this is what it's going to be like in the future, but just technology goes at such a fast pace, doesn't it? So we've been able to learn uh, roundabouts, traffic lights, uh, intersections, multi-lane roads, all the kind of things you need to drive. And we've shown that in now in six different UK cities, London, Cambridge, uh, Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool, Coventry. And here's a traffic light scenario. So we're gonna come up here and, and stop at this red light. But these are particularly difficult roads, aren't they? Mm. Narrow, quite fast cars coming pedestrians, motorbikes, all the sorts of things you could throw at it. Could you have used any electric vehicle? Yeah, any modern electric vehicle we can we can make autonomous essentially. Uh, we just need to put the cameras on them, the computer in the back, uh, and then and then we and then we can drive. That's what's also really special about the system, is it really adaptable. Not only can it go to different cities and different locations, but it can also go on different vehicle platforms. So we're gonna make a right turn here. Um, I feel like we're on the Jetsons. So that's called an unprotected right turn. That's probably the hardest maneuver in autonomous driving because you have to cross a line of traffic. Um, and now we're coming onto a pretty narrow side street here. Yeah, and it and seemed, like it, it seemed like it paused to check there wasn't anything coming. Yeah, it is a very safe driver. Um, we've got an oncoming motorbike here. Do you feel safe? I feel safe. I feel absolutely safe. Thank you very much. That was amazing. I can't believe I've just been in a car that was driving itself. That was a, definitely a first for me, so thanks very much. Awesome. How brilliant, fun. That brilliant was, uh... technology. As Chief Purpose and Vision Officer at Virgin, I was so excited about this investment because not only is Wave going to change the way that we all use vehicles, but it's going to make it safer, more reliable, more sustainable, and really importantly, it's going to make driving more accessible for people. I'm assuming these are all the sort of things that was going through your mind when you set up WAVE. Um, how do you think it's gonna make lives better for people? We're gonna see autonomous transportation that moves in a way that is safe because it, it can really understand the world around it with computers that can't fall asleep, but systems that can really drive in a way that is incredibly safe. We're gonna see sustainable transport because it's gonna usher in more adoption of electrification and electric vehicles. Um, the driving will be more efficient uh, and then most, most importantly, it'll be more accessible because these cars can, um, can really move around in ways that, that benefit us most and enhance what we need to do. Whether it's from a, a cost perspective uh, or a time of day perspective, this is what autonomy can do and this is the exact future that we're building at WAVE. I absolutely love that. I also love that you, your first hire was your culture and people person. You would have thought in an AI company you would have gone for someone that's really good at technology or your finance person or your marketing person. What was it that drove you to think that your first hire should be people and culture? When you're on a multi-year journey to building a generational business, uh, it's, I mean, it's so important to get the culture right. Uh, that, that's what drives collaboration, um, conviction, uh, everything around. Um, the teamwork that you need, and especially given we're building such a multi, uh, you know, multidisciplinary problem, one that intersects software engineering, hardware engineering, product, um, simulation, machine learning, as well as um, uh, you know, everything required to make it a, a successful experience for, um, for the users. So to bring all this together requires a, um, requires a really unique culture, and we're thrilled to have built that at Wave. It's one of uh, the things that I think is the um, is a strength of our team. And, uh, and it's what makes building what we do really fun. I'm, I feel absolutely privileged to work with the world-class entrepreneurs, engineers, scientists that, that I do every day. And, um, and, it, and I, I think that the investment we've made in people and culture really pays off. Um, since Carolyn, our VP of People and Culture, joined us from the very beginning through to the uh, incredible, um, you know, incredible team, uh, office space and, and ways of working we have today. Uh, this is what uh, great companies are defined by, and I'm, I'm really proud to have built that at Wave. Well, it's something we feel really passionate about too, so I can't wait to come and meet your team. Uh, something that worries me slightly, and I know lots of people when it comes to AI, is how do you trust it? Um, how do you go about creating that trust within the AI? And are there any other challenges that you've come across um, in your journey of building the company? It's, it's so important not to personify the machine itself and not to build trust in the way that we build trust as, as humanity. Um, because that, 
you know, we've got to remember it, it is a machine and we're not here to replace humans, we're here to enhance what we can do as society. So fundamentally, I think it's more important to have a, a team that, uh, where people can really understand the principles of why and what you've built. To have a team that, um, that you, know, you can share their journey, share the journey of building this technology with the world. Um, and I think being very clear about the principles of what you're building, why you're doing it, how you're doing it, that's how you build trust. Personifying the team and the journey and sharing that with the world and then being very clear about the performance expectations, the safety and the value that that end product delivers. Um, for us, that's the recipe for success. I'm really excited about that, but what's next for Wave? I'm so excited uh, next year to start a, a commercial, pi uh, commercial pilots with our partners in last mile grocery delivery. So this means we're gonna see our technology um, autonomously driving vans and, and delivering groceries, whether it's to fulfillment centers, to community lockers or to, to customers' homes. And so this is a great, I think a great use case for us to get started um, because it lets us prototype the technology in a way where uh, you know, we just have groceries in the vehicle. Um, it's a very, uh, you know, I think, well-defined use case and, and a great place for us to get started. But ultimately, we're building an autonomous platform. And, uh, you know, over the next few years, we'll see this, uh, we'll see this really uh, come, come of age, whether it's in cities throughout the world or whether it's moving into ride-hailing and public transport. But ultimately, this is an autonomous driving service that can, can drive for everyone everywhere. And we see it being the first to 100 cities.